Hi, hello, my name is Patrick. Again, thank you for joining me again in this time. We're going to continue the teaching of uh, learning to use your faith in prayer to receive what you need from God, part two, <laughs> you know. And um, let's just pray right now. Father, we just thank you for your presence. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your joy. Thank you for your peace. Thank you for your word that is at a lamp unto our feet, lights our pathway. Thank you for your joy. Thank you for all that you have for us. Thank you for the blessing. Thank you for the healing. Thank you for the favor. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you for the leading, guiding of the Holy Ghost. Reside de ve, kira roso tapara para ma, no carando carande, requete pique pepe pique pique pepe pepe pepe, o sarandre ki que mundo, roso de ki na nande ki, resi que para mande ki, rando corando cote si te que, o sira ro cuca pare, resete, resi que pepe pepe pepe, o rando so. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you for the utterance of the gift. Thank you for the gift of faith. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the fire of the Holy Ghost. Thank you for your word that's a lamp unto our feet. It lights our pathway. Thank you for your blessing. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your joy. Thank you for everything you're doing in our lives. And thank you that today as I preach and teach your word, the power of God will fall upon everyone under the sound of my voice and touch them and heal them and deliver them and set them free in the name of Jesus. And your word is a sharper than two-edged sword, piercing the division in the soul and the narrow is the intent. Oh, <laughs> Ooh, is the intent. Oh, <laughs> Now it's the intent of the heart of everyone as I speak and preach and minister your word today in Jesus' name. Whew. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. So last time I was talking about, you know, first thing we talked about last time was for the eyes of the Lord on the righteous and ears are attentive to their prayer. First Peter, first Peter. 1 Peter 3.12, the eyes of the Lord watch over those who do right, and his ears are open to their prayer, but the Lord turn his face against those who do evil. God's, God's eye, God's ear are open to you. God's eyes is on you. His ears are open to you, to your prayers daily, daily, okay, daily, daily. So our job is to always be uh, attentive and knowing that God's word, God hear his word, he watch over his word to perform it. He's faithful, okay? He's just, okay? Oh. <laughs> that his eyes is on you, his eyes is on me, his eyes is on his children. And he hears your prayer, he hears your cry, okay? And his ears are open to your prayer. His eyes is on you and his ears are are on your words, your prayers every day. Psalms 34, 15. The eyes of the Lord are toward the right and his ears are towards to a cry. So again, his eyes are on you and his ears are towards your prayers and your cries daily. And that's why you see when we come to the kingdom of God, when we come to God, knowing that his eyes is on the righteous and his ears are open to their prayers, that's why we come with boldness. We come with faith. We come with belief that everything we ask God, he hears us. If we know that he hears us, we have a petition. And one of the key, like I said before, we when we come to God, we must come in faith. When we pray to God, we must come in faith and boldness. Go to uh, Hebrew 4.16. So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious Father. There we receive his mercy. We'll find grace to help us when we need. We have to come boldly. When we have to come boldly, we have to come with faith. Okay? One of the key. Faith and boldness. Okay? These two things. Like uh, James 1.6. But let him act in faith with no doubting, for he who doubt is like a waving sea and driven, tossed by the wind. Hebrew 11, 6. But without faith, it's impossible to please, please God. 
For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and he's a reward of those who diligently seek him. So when we come, we come with faith, we come with boldness, we come with expectation, we come expecting. Come expecting the blessing of God. Come expecting the anointing of God. Come expecting the love of God in this hour. Come expecting great things in your life in the name of Jesus. Come expecting. I come expecting even as I preach this word. The, the Holy Spirit is going to fall upon me. The word is going to touch me. The blessing is going to come upon me. Same for you and I. I come expecting Hebrew 11 1 now faith is a substance of things hopeful evidence things not seen that's why faith everything in the word of God you have to come with faith you have to come with expectation you have to come with belief okay that what you ask in God he's gonna do it for you and that by your faith I like what the woman with the issue of blood when she said if I only touch the hem of his garment I shall be made whole and how Jesus responded daughter thy faith Faith had made you well. Your faith. So when we come with faith, expecting blessing, expecting great things, expecting the touch of God, expecting his love, his joy, his peace, we receive it. Because as we put our faith in God, his word, his promises, we shall see those, those, oh, <laughs> those prayers, those promises come to pass in our life. And we get to enjoy the fruit. The Bible said, life and death are done the power of the tongue. Those who love it will eat the fruit of it. So when we confess with our mouth the blessing of God, when we confess with our mouth the joy, the peace, the love of God, so when we confess with our mouth and decree, confess with our mouth and believe in our heart, Faith is one half in your heart, one half in what you say. When you confess the word of God, you will get what you confess. If you confess blessing, you get blessing. If you confess healing, you receive healing. You will come. <laughs> a touch of the Holy Ghost, an infilling of the Holy Ghost. You will be filled with the Holy Ghost. You'll be filled with his love. So confess the word of God. That's why you see in these teachings that I, the Lord is leading me to do, I put the word of God in there so that you could have the word of God for yourself, that you could confess the word of God. Confess it with your mouth. Speak it out in Jesus' name. 2 Corinthians 4, 4, 13. Since we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written, I believe, therefore I spoke. We also believe this will confess, speak. So confess the word of God daily. Confess the blessing. Confess the favor. Confess the healing. Confess open door. Confess the good things of God in your life. John 16. If you abide in me, my word abide in you. You will ask what you desire. It shall be done for you. So when we confess the word of God, when we speak, he said, if Jesus said, if we live in him and his words abide in us. So when we confess his word, his word will never return to us void. We'll go fulfill the plan and purpose of God in our life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. When we confess his word. His word go forth out of my mouth and it will fulfill the plan and purpose of God in your life. So confess his word. Speak out his word. Romans 10, 8, 9. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth, in your heart. That is the word, the word of faith which we preach. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So we have to confess and decree his word daily and speak out the blessing Speak out the love of God. So now we're gonna go up, go into some some. Uh, whoo, I put some scriptures here. This is the part that that you know in this video that is new. You know, blessing and favor. Hmm. Better get ready. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be good. Deuteronomy twenty-eight two eight. 
All these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of your Lord God. Bless you shall be in the city. Bless you shall be in this country. Bless you shall be in the fruit of your body, produce of your ground, increase of your herd, increase of your cattle, offspring of your flock. Bless you shall be in your basket and your kneading bowl. Bless you shall be when you come in. Bless you shall be when you go out. The Lord God will cause your enemy who rise up against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come against you one way and flee before you seven ways. That's the blessing. That scripture right there. And I'll put it all on the Facebook page. That is the blessing. Okay? I know there's a song called The Blessing, and then which is a good song. Okay? You can sing it out, and which is good. But learn to know the blessing that he has for you. Detail it. Bless you are in your business. Bless you are in your job. Bless you are going in. Bless you are going out. You have to speak it. You have to confess the bless. You want the blessing? Speak out the blessing. What is the blessing? God said you shall be blessed in the city, blessed in your job, blessed in your house, blessed coming in, blessed going out. Speak it. Confess it. Woo! I receive great blessing today in the name of Jesus. Speak it out. Decree it. Mm. And I like that. The Lord will cause your enemy who rise up against you to be defeated before your faith. They shall come at come out against you one way and flee flee before you seven way. And I love here the Lord, the Lord, my Lord God, your Lord God will command a blessing upon your storehouse. Um, you say what is a storehouse? Your bank account, your your where you keep your wealth, your storehouse. And all which you set your hand. And God will bless you in the land which the Lord God has given you. So when we speak out this wonderful blessing, we receive the blessing upon our lives, upon our family. You know, oh, Ephesians, Ephesians 1, 3. All, all praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us, who has blessed us with any spiritual blessing in heavenly places. You have received all spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Bless supernaturally, bless physically, bless emotionally. You have received all the blessings. Receive it. Financial blessing, you know, healing, all these blessings shall come upon and overtake you. Receive that. And, you know, so now, whew, thank you, Father, for your blessing. Thank you for your blessing. Thank you for your blessing. And now we have to also partake of the of the favor of God. His favor is upon you. His favor upon you coming in and going out. His, he, he has given you favor. Listen to me. I'm saying God has given you favor. Favor. Supernatural favor. Favor going in. Favor going out. Favor with man. Favor with God. God has given you favor. And that favor will multiply from this day on. He'll multiply. His favor is multiplying upon your life. And you shall be blessed. You shall be blessed. You shall be blessed. You shall be blessed. Beyond blessing. Financial blessing is coming to your house. Financial blessing is coming to your house. And it's going to come upon you and overtake you from this day on. In the name of Jesus. Oh, I received that myself. Luke 3, Luke 2, 52. Jesus grew in wisdom and stature in favor with God and man. He had favor with God and man. So if Christ lives in you, so you have favor with God and man. <laughs> you know, he lives in you. So you have favor with God and man. If Jesus had favor with God, so you have five favor with God and man. So receive that favor. Psalms 5, 12. Surely the Lord, surely your Lord God bless the righteous and surround them with favor as a shield. So, so his favor will surround you as a shield. His favor will be upon you so strong from this day on that it'll be like a shield. Wherever you go, you carry the favor and the blessing of God. Wherever you walk, you walk here, you, you have the favor and the blessing of God. You go left, you have favor and blessing. You go east, you have favor and the blessing of God. You go north, you have favor. You Everywhere you go to places, you have favor and the blessing of God. So partake of the blessing and favor of God upon your life.
wisdom and understanding. You know, people are always saying that, oh, you know, how do I do this? How can I do this? God give wisdom. When Solomon, when, when the Lord asked Solomon, hey, what do you want me to, you know, what do you want? He, he you know, God gave him wisdom. Okay? Wisdom. You know, and wisdom ah, is a supernatural grace. This is not natural wisdom. That's why you see, I, I sometimes men, men or even Christians misunderstand the wisdom of God. They're comparing the wisdom of God with the wisdom of man. No, the wisdom of God is higher. Jesus had wisdom. That's why you see when the Pharisees try to deceive him, say, hey, uh, who should we tithe to? You know, should we, you know, should we give money to the to the government, you know, the government, which at the time for um, that uh, the Jewish people were under the Roman rule, you know, under, you know, he said, let me get a coin. Whose face is this? Oh, well, this is Caesar. Give Caesar what is his and give God what is God's. That's wisdom. To come to, to you know, and they're like, oh, my God. Like, wait. It's like, yeah, because they came at him with, with strong words, but he came with supernatural wisdom to defend himself and also disarm them. Proverbs 2, 5. For the Lord gives you wisdom, and from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. Oh, let your knowledge, let your understanding, let your wisdom come upon your people right now in the name of Jesus. Wisdom and knowledge come upon them in Jesus' name. So if you if you don't know something, ask God. He'll give you wisdom. The Bible said, if you, there's a scripture here. Let me get it right now. And they think it's James. If anyone lacks wisdom, let him come, let him let me see. Uh... There it is. Favorite scripture. James 1, 5, 6. Let's see. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God who give to all liberal without reproach. It will, it will be given to them. But let him ask in faith. Again, here's that scripture. Same one that we have said, you know, but without doubting. So we have to come in faith. Lord, I need your wisdom. Lord, I need your wisdom to solve people's problems. If you're a doctor, if you're a pharmacist, if you are in a job that is very delicate, you could ask for the wisdom of God within that job. You don't think God knows how to fix computers, fix problems? Even the job that I'm in, I fix computers. I need the wisdom of God. I always put a demand on the wisdom of God. Lord, help me. Lord, anoint me afresh with the Holy Ghost to fix people's problems. I need that. And even as a minister, I need the wisdom of God. I can't go by my what I think I know, what I know, or why I could skip. I have to go by the Holy Spirit. I have to go by the word of God. So ask if you need wisdom, if you need guidance, if you need help. That's why he said, come boldly to the throne room to receive all that you need in the time you need. Ephesians 1, 17. I keep asking that, I keep asking, Ephesians 1, 17. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may he give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation to, so that you may know Jesus Christ better. <laughs> Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, according to Ephesians 1 17, that, that your spirit of wisdom, your spirit of wisdom and revelation will come upon me, upon the people under the sound of my voice, that we may know Jesus, we may know the word of God, we may know the things of God even more, we may fall in love with Jesus and fall in love with his word. <laughs> In the name of Jesus, that we neto rosote, nikora sanama, randaba kandoko, recite pe ketrose, rosota barandoko, yabogo barandose, oh, kasandeki. We may know him. 
We may know him. To know Jesus is to intimate know Christ. To know Jesus. To know the Father. To know the Son. To know the Holy Spirit. I pray, Father, that the spirit of wisdom and revelation will come upon me, upon your people, in the name of Jesus. To know Jesus. To know the Holy Ghost. To know our Heavenly Father in the name of Jesus. Love and peace. Romans 5, 5. Now, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. We need the love of God. Now, I did a video, and I'll probably do another video about the love of God. We need the love of God, especially in this time of hour. It's the love of God that's going to empower us to know, to experience the love of God, the joy, the peace. To know the love of God. We need it. I need the love of God. You need the love of God. We all need the love of God. So receive the love of God. Romans 5, he poured out his love as he poured out the Holy Spirit. Please receive the love of God. Even now as I'm speaking this, I feel the love of God is coming upon <laughs> me, upon you in the name of Jesus. It's coming upon you afresh from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Receive the love of God. Receive the love of God. Receive his goodness. Receive his blessing. Receive the peace of God that surpasses all your understanding. John 14, 27. Peace I leave you. My peace I give to you. Not the world give do I give. Let your heart not be troubled. Not let it be dismayed. The peace of God which surpasses all your understanding. Guard your heart and mind in Christ. Don't don't buy into the peace of the world. Many times people put their trust in what the world say. Oh, CNN says this. Oh, we oh yeah, they said they should put a mask. If we put a mask, that will that will you know protect us. No, that's the that's the that's the things of the world. That's the wisdom of the world. That's the wisdom of the world. That's the wisdom of the world. Okay? People, you know, they're putting their faith and their peace onto a mask. If, if they put this lame mask on, they'll feel they'll feel safe. You put your peace, you receive the peace of Jesus. You put your faith in the peace of God. You put your faith in the peace of God, in the peace of God alone. Receive peace in your mind regarding situation. Receive the peace of God. Healing and deliverance. Isaiah 53, 4, 5. Surely he has bore our grief and carried our sorrows, and yet the steam is stricken and smitten by God and inflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquity, and chastised of our peace was upon him. And by the stripe of Jesus Christ, you have been healed. So I bind any sickness and disease in Jesus' name. By the stripe of Jesus, you have been healed. Past tense, past tense. You have been healed. So what should I do if past tense, God has already healed me? Your job is to receive your healing. Claim your healing. Rebuke that sickness and disease. Rebuke it. Command it to leave. It has no right over you. Sickness and disease has no right over you. If you're a child of God, sickness and disease has no right over you. Don't receive it. Don't receive infirmity. Don't receive fear. Don't receive doubt. Don't receive sickness and disease. Rebuke them in Jesus' name. You know, the Bible said if you... <laughs> if you... Uh, if you... <laughs> you know... Uh, I, gotta, I, I gotta find that. <laughs> I feel the anointing. <laughs> oh God, more of your love, more of your anointing from the top of the head to the soles of your feet. The Bible said, if we, you know, if you, if, if the, you know, you know, I gotta let me get this scripture right now. I gotta, you know, let me get it. Is is uh, John four seven, and I love John so John four seven, James not John James four seven sorry, 
submit yourself to God, then yeah, submit yourself to God. Resist the devil. Resist the power of the devil. Resist the temptation. Resist sickness and disease. Then he shall flee. So when we resist, what is resist? I rebuke you. Get out of here. A dog come in your house and taking a poop right there. You don't say, oh, Lord, why do you allow this dog? No, God is trying to say, use your power, use your authority, command the dog and kick the dog out of your house. Resist sickness. Resist the, the power of the enemy. Resist it. They shall leave. That's why you see with the whole corona nonsense, you know, the church prayed. The, what was it? The, they said, oh, there are going to be millions of people dead, trillions, you know, all that stuff. The church prayed. What, 600,000 worldwide? That's the power of the church. Out of 8 billion people in the world, 600,000 people died so far of Corona. And they're still waiting for that millions of millions of people. Resist the devil. Rebuke him. Rebuke the power of the enemy. Rebuke them. Come against him. And he shall flee. He will flee. Matthew 8, 16, 17. Many were healed in evening. When evening has come, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed. He cast out the spirit with a word and healed all who were sick, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet. He himself... Same scripture, this is now re reaffirming in the New Testament. He himself took our infirmity and bore our sickness. So if Jesus took your infirmities and bore your sickness, stop holding on to sickness and disease. And stop justifying in your heart, oh, well, this is what the Lord wants. No. God wants you freed. He wants you delivered. He wants you healed. He wants you saved. He wants you blessed. He wants you to receive his love. Jesus... Uh, Oh, God, I love you. Jesus took your stripes on the cross. He, 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 he shed his blood. See, Christians have to realize God did it. Our job is to receive it. Yeah, see? Your job is to receive it. Receive it. Receive the blessing. Receive the love. Receive the joy. Receive provision. Receive the love of God. Receive healing in your body from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Receive it. Exodus 23-25. You shall serve the Lord your God. He will bless you, bless your bread and your water. I love that scripture. You shall Rosso borosso tarandeki. Ora so cotrasse. Resia rakika. Repira rosso. Rosso. You shall serve the Lord God. He will bless your bread and your water. And God, this is what God say. Listen to this. I will take sickness and disease away from your midst. Sickness and disease will not be in your house. Sickness and disease will not be in your life. Sickness and disease will not be. Any area near your apartment, I decree, declare that in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, oh, I feel the anointing. <laughs> feel the anointing. So receive that. Receive healing. Receive blessing. Receive favor. Receive wisdom. And now one of my favorite, I love, I love the power. He has, he has anointed you with, you know, Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. He has anointed you. He said, Acts, Acts 1, 8, you shall receive power and after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Receive that power. Let that power flow out of you. Let that power flow in you and through you in the name of Jesus. I feel the power of the Holy Ghost coming upon everyone under the sound of my voice in the name of Jesus. I feel there's going to be a great baptism of the fire of God coming upon people. The anointing that come upon you and I are fresh. We're so hard also. Double anointing is coming upon us. Isaiah 10, 27.
It shall come to pass in that day. The burden will be taken away from the burden will be taken away from their shoulder, the yoke from the neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing oil. The anointing. The anointing destroys sickness and disease. The anointing set people free. The anointing heal. The anointing deliver. See, one of the things I said, and I'll say it again on this video, people, believers, have to find churches that has the anointing flowing in the church. On the man of God, on the preaching, on the teaching, on the worship. All of it. And moving in, in, in the service. When you have a church full of the Holy Ghost, full of the fire of God, full of the power, full of faith, having the anointing, the fire of God moving, people are going to get saved, people are going to get healed, people are going to get delivered, and they're going to give. There's a scripture in the Bible. You know, at the day, at the... At the day of his power. Psalms 110.3. The Bible said, at the day of God's power, manifested power. Your troops will be willing on the day of battle. Your people shall be volunteers on the day of your power. See? You say, what does that mean? When the power of God, when the anointing flows, moving in a service, the people will be givers. They'll be friendly. They'll be loving. They'll be joyful. They'll be peace. They'll be willing to go out and get people saved, get people healed, get people delivered. You won't have to force them. You won't have to, oh, you got to do this, you know. No. The anointing, the anointing, the anointing is the importance of the anointing. We have to, especially in this time, and I say this by the Spirit of the Lord, we need the anointing. You need the anointing. You need the anointing to come upon you. You need the anointing to preach the word. You need the anointing to teach the word. You need the anointing to prophesy. You need the anointing to demonstrate the power of God. You need the anointing to destroy the power of the enemy, the power of the devil. You need the anointing. You need the anointing, the Holy Ghost. You need the anointing. You need the anointing. We need the anointing. We need the anointing. We need the anointing in the church. We need the anointing in our home. We need the anointing in our business. We need the anointing in our house. We need the anointing in our city. We need the anointing in everywhere we go. You need the anointing. Let that never change. Having a church full of lights and smoke does not mean that's the anointing. I, I tell people this. My type of church and the church the Lord's going to have me birth out. Okay? A church. Bathroom, clean bathroom. You know, men's and women bathroom and children bathroom. Water and chairs. White wall. The word and the screen. That's it. Why? Because the people are not there for the ambience. They're here for the anointing. They're here for Jesus. They're here for the Holy Ghost. And that's how I would tell them. They'll be in a factory. And their factory will be empty. Two bathrooms, one woman, one man. Okay? Water, you know, water found for the people. Okay? And people say, whoa, man. And you have chairs. You know, yeah, we're here for God. We're not here for, we're not here. We're not here for anything else. We're here for Jesus. We're not here to play game. We don't have no saints, pictures of saints and all these, you know, oh, brother, so-and-so gave to this church. No, you're here for Jesus. And when your heart is for Christ, when your heart is for the anointing, for the things of God, you shall do what Christ did. He will just say, cleanse the leper, cast out the devil, preach and teach the word, and be anointed to cast out devils. Luke 11, 9, 13. And I'll close with this. My favorite scripture. Acts. Acts. 
ask. So I say to you, ask, it shall be given. Seek and you will find. Knock, it will be open. For anyone who asks, receive. And he who finds, to him who knocks, it will be open. If a son asks for bread from any father among you, will he give him a stone? If he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? Or if he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If you then, being even, know how to give good gifts, to your children, how much more will our Heavenly Father, your Heavenly Father, my Heavenly Father, our Heavenly Father, give us the mighty Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will lead you. The Holy Ghost will guide you. The Holy Ghost will reveal things to you. Even now, in the name of Jesus, Father, I pray that the Holy Ghost will fall upon us afresh from the top of our head to the sole of our <laughs> To the soles of our feet. Anoint us afresh with the Holy Ghost. Anoint me afresh. <laughs> afresh with the Holy Ghost. Anoint me afresh to preach your word. Anoint me afresh to teach your word. Anoint me afresh to demonstrate the power of God. Anoint me afresh. <laughs> Anoint me afresh. Anoint your people afresh to demonstrate the power of God. Anoint them afresh to heal the sick. Anoint them afresh to demonstrate the power of God. Anoint them afresh to read your word, teach your word, minister your word, to win souls. <laughs> Anoint us, Father. And that's the scripture. <laughs> Receive that anointing from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Receive that anointing. Let you never be the same again. Let the power of the Holy Ghost come upon you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Let wisdom, let blessing, let favor, let peace of God come upon you in the name of Jesus. You'll <laughs> never be the same. Never be the same. I'll never be the same. <laughs> I'll never be the same. I'll never be the same. Woo. <laughs> I'll never be the same. I will never be the same. And you will never be the same either. Say, so why? Why, why you? Because the Holy Ghost is so good. The present God is so good. The Word of God is so good. Jesus is so good. Oh. God will give you victory. Victory Monday, victory Tuesday, victory Thursday, victory Saturday, victory every day. He'll give you blessing. He loves you. He pour his blessing and favor upon you. You know, sometimes people look, all oh, the Jews, they, they have the blessing. God. We have that blessing too. We have it too. God bless the Jewish people. But God bless you too. <laughs> because it's on us too. We're the children of Abraham too. That blessing is on us too. So receive that. Receive that. Oh, oh my God. Now. Oh. <laughs> and now all this you receive as a child of God. If you have not given your life to Jesus, today is the day. Romans 10, 9, 10. 10, 9, 10. I love that. If you confess with your mouth. The Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. You shall be saved for with the heart one believe unto righteousness in the mouth confession is made. So just repeat after me. Ooh. Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sin. Wash me. Cleanse me. Set me free. Ooh. Jesus, thank you. You died for me. I believe that you're risen again you risen from the dead and that you're coming back again for me. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. Give me a passion for the lost, a hunger for the things of God, and a holy boldness to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. I am saved. I am born again. I'm forgiven and I'm on my way to heaven for I have Jesus Christ in my heart. Oh. And if you said that prayer, you are a child of God. All these blessings shall come upon you. And overtake you. Father, I release your blessing, your favor upon those who
those who said this the salvation prayer lord i receive your blessing your favor upon them in the name of jesus lord i ask for your anointing the baptism of the holy ghost to come upon them right now oh there it is from the top of their head to the soles of their feet in jesus name baptize them afresh with the holy ghost and fire and lord and heal them every sickness and disease lord empower them and lord i ask that oh Bless them and protect them and strengthen them in this hour. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Well, I give you an opportunity to, to give and bless this ministry. If you like to sow and give unto the Touch of God ministry today, uh, you know, info, PayPal, me, the Touch of God. And cash app at Patrick Buzzard. That's me, Patrick Buzzard. I believe every person that's sowing and giving today for the preaching, teaching the gospel according to the word of God, they shall receive a hundredfold return on what they have sown and given in Jesus' mighty name. Genesis 26, 12, 14. Then Isaac sowed in the land and reaped the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. And the man began to prosper and continue to prosper until he became very prosperous, for he had possession. <clears throat> of flocks and passion uh, possession of herd and great numbers of servants god is gonna bless you for everyone father everyone who give in this ministry father i ask for a hundredfold return a hundredfold blessing any seed that is sown right now in the name of jesus I ask that you bless them a hundredfold. You bless them going in. You bless them going out. You multiply every seed that is sown in the name of Jesus. And you multiply and bless them in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Well, I thank you for joining me. God bless you. God loves you. Have a blessed week. Have a blessed day. And continue to stay in the word and stay in his presence. In Jesus' name. Thank you. God bless.